Douglas McGregor is a retired United States Army colonel, combat veteran, author of five books, including Margin of Victory. Colonel, thank you for your service, uh, sir, to the United States of America, and thank you for joining us this morning. Hey, good morning, Joe. My pop was in the Army, man. You know what, Colonel? I think we chatted about this before. He was in the U.S. Army Air Corps, right? And, uh, and so I wanted to kind of get that word out. U.S. Army Air Corps, which, which was the precursor to the Air Force, as you know, sir. And I, yeah, now, we should never have let those guys go, you know. <laughs> I wear a hat. I have a hat, Colonel. It says U.S. Army Air Corps, man. I found it online. I wear it proudly. So it's great to talk to an Army guy in the name of my daddy. And, Colonel, the last time we spoke, you told us uh, why you think we should pull troops out of Afghanistan. We had a horrific uh, uh, incident just, uh, you know, the day before yesterday where we lost a local New Yorker, among others, uh, Christopher Slutman from Ladder 27 in the Claremont section of the Bronx. We lost a stellar FDNY firefighter. Uh, give, us, give us your take, Colonel McGregor, why we should indeed pull out of Afghanistan. Well, first of all, we went in there uh, exclusively for the purpose of uh, dealing with Osama bin Laden and the band of three or four hundred that surrounded him. And uh, we failed to get Osama bin Laden, which is one of the reasons we lingered. But then we turned this into a much larger exercise in trying to create a nation state out of a region that has never been a nation state. Mm. It still isn't. And we've made a number of mistakes internally. Uh, We've actually aided and abetted the corruption because a place like that, a society that backward, cannot absorb billions of dollars in aid. So it's turned into a, a bonanza for contractors, a catastrophe for our soldiers, uh, and a huge waste of money for us at this point. We just need to get out. The Russians uh, are keenly interested in what happens there. They will work with the Iranians and others in the region to try and contain the the mess that, frankly, we've helped to make worse. But we just need to leave, stop wasting our money, and come home. So we step out. You know the Taliban takes over. And, and, and because, in, the nev- in my opinion, correct me if I'm wrong, Colonel, there'll never be peace over there. They just fight amongst themselves. But does that embolden another, perhaps, caliphate state? Uh, no, 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 not at all. First of all, the Taliban will not take over the entire country hmm. because the Russians and uh, the surrounding states won't allow it. Uh, The Taliban is just a strategic hedge for Pakistan and its struggle with India for dominance in the region. Wow. Wow. That's all it is. We've always been irrelevant to this process. We're we're just an annoyance. There are about 40 million Patans or Pashtun, and uh, they are Sunni Islamist, and they are committed to uh, a radical form of Islam, but they're homegrown. They're focused exclusively on their own territory. The, the rest of the bunch that you've got up in the northwest uh, of the country or the southwest of the country, uh, some of them are Shiites, most of them are Uzbeks, Tajiks. I know most of your, your viewers may not know what that means, That's but right. these people are Mongol Turkic. They're different from the Pashtuns that are really Persian-related. These people will not fight in, in perpetuity. They will struggle from time to time, but they will come to terms with each other because at some point everybody wants to do business. Unfortunately for us, uh, on the Pashtun side in that country, that means heroin. And uh, they've got another bumper crop, thanks to us, and I'm sure we'll see more in the future. Yeah, and where does that heroin uh, end up, Colonel, you know? Hey, I, I, Colonel, Most of it goes into Eastern Europe and Russia. Really, from right over there. Amazing. Now, can you, do you know anything about this attack that killed the three American servicemen and that contractor? No, I don't. And uh, I don't think we know the facts at this point. But look, you can't trust anyone over there. Everyone who served there has always had to have one eye on the potential friend as well as the the known enemy. And again, you cannot endear yourselves uh, to Muslims this way. You're a foreigner. You will always be an outsider. You will always be, you know, an infidel. So again, we just need to pull out and cut off this hemorrhaging of funds into this money pit. We need the money here. We can't afford this nonsense, and the soldiers aren't going to change anything. Anybody who served there, soldiers, air, airmen, Navy, Marines, doesn't matter. They'll all tell you the same thing. We, it's like sticking your fist in a, into a bucket of water. Wow. As soon as you pull wow. your fist out, wow. the water goes back. Well, how about, the, you know, I think I'm a bit of a hawk, Colonel. You, listen, you, you put your life on the line for us, and we always appreciate that and respect that so much. Can we at least, before we leave, drop a mother of all bombs? Is that, <laughs> is that bad strategy? I, I have huh? never, I, uh, Joe, I have never understood why our first act wasn't to wipe out the heroin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, if you do nothing else, well, napalm it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> My kind of guy, Colonel, I'm just saying. I mean, but really, leave the military to the military if you're going to go in, right? Well, I wouldn't go that far because the military has made a terrible mess. The generals have been some of the most incompetent people we've wow. ever had in history. Wow. I wouldn't have any faith or confidence in them. These are all politically correct, card-carrying members of the left who are more worried about doing whatever the left tells them in, in order to be promoted. So I wouldn't worry about that. I would just get our troops out yeah. as soon as possible. Yeah, yeah. It's a waste of time and money. And Colonel McGregor, speaking of terrorism, the American government labeled the Iranian Revolutionary Guard as a terrorist organization. Was that the right move, sir? Well, you know, I mean, we've used this <clears throat> term terrorist so widely now. Mm. I don't know what it means anymore. And uh, we, we've treated Iran as a, sort of this permanently diseased entity whose only future lies in military destruction. We forget that Iran was a strategic partner of the United States for a very long time. Yeah. And we forget that the Iranians, uh, I'm talking about the population, would like to be a strategic partner of the United States again. So we're dealing with a government that we don't like. Uh, but I think uh, we've pushed it to the point where the Iranians now see their only alternative to us as residing with Russia and China primarily. And that's very unfortunate because there's no real future with Russia. The Chinese can help them economically, but the yeah. Russians certainly can. Yeah. And now you were one of the first people, Colonel McGregor, to talk about the need for putting troops at the border. It seems like the situation has only gotten worse. How did this situation get so bad and what indeed can be done about it? Well, the only solution is martial law on the border, putting the United States Army in charge of it and closing it off. It would take about 30,000, 40,000 troops. Uh, we're talking about the regular army. You need robust rules of engagement. That means that you can shoot people as required if your life is in danger. And uh, you need to string concertina wherever you need to and put forces on the ground wherever they need to go. Remember, this is an 1,800-mile border. Yeah. Adding more policemen doesn't change a thing. They're already overwhelmed at, at 15,000 plus customs officers, and they're getting no help in some cases from the states. Uh, Mexico has withdrawn all of its police from their former uh, checkpoints uh, just beyond the border because, frankly, they've decided that it's in the interest of the Democratic Party to bring as many of these people into the country as possible. Colonel Douglas McGregor, the book is Margin of Victory, among others, uh, a, a man who has dedicated most of his life to the United States of America and the United States Army. Hey, Colonel, before we go, and I know I'm a layman, you're the expert, so at the risk of sounding really ignorant, forgive me, I'll have to do that caveat up front, sir. When Bin Laden, we helped Bin Laden in Afghanistan. We, of course. Did, we helped, we built this guy up. What in his sick mind, and may he, God forgive me, rotten hell, but what, what is his sick mind, he, how did he turn it around against us? How did that happen? Happen. We get this guy everything he needs, arms and everything. Oh, America's the enemy. How does that happen in this world today, Colonel? Well, remember, in the Clinton administration, uh, the attitude was that we needed to intervene in the Balkans on behalf of Muslims, that this would uh, essentially cultivate friendship and understanding in the Muslim world for the United States. So we intervened against the Orthodox Serbs, Orthodox Christian Serbs in Kosovo, and put essentially a Muslim drug mafia in charge of that country and called it a great success story for democracy. These people have never been our friends. Mm. They are never going to be our friends. They are incurably hostile. I'm talking about the Sunni Islamists. Impossible. Won't happen. But we have deluded ourselves into believing that somehow or another we could play the game that they often do, which is your enemy is my enemy. doesn't work that way. They are at war with the whole world until it adopts Islam. So you can just write off anyone who is part of any Sunni Islamist organization. Mm. This was the problem with John McCain and his friends on the Hill. They wanted to support these so-called rebels in Syria against Mr. Assad. Next to Assad, these people were titanic war criminals. Assad looked like uh, a saint compared to the people that were wow. trying to overthrow him. And nobody bothers to point that out. So we, we need to end this nonsense of considering any of these Sunni Arab or Turkish or Iranian or anything else, any Sunni Islamist as a potential ally or friend. They are all hostile. We should keep them out of the country, and we should stay out of their countries. Colonel Douglas MacArthur, uh, MacArthur look at me. I did that before. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that is a, the ultimate compliment, isn't it? One of my heroes. Do you wear shades? Do you wear those sunglasses, Colonel, when you uh, walk <laughs> Not often, but he's my hero, too. <laughs> hey, I made the right mistake. Colonel Douglas McGregor, you got to Google Colonel Douglas McGregor. Margin of Victory is the name of the book. Thank you for your service, sir. It's a privilege, you know, Colonel, to have you on the show. Please come back soon. Uh, God bless you. And God bless you, too, sir.